Hello YouTubers, Charles Holler, and it's March 4th, 2014. Normally they say March comes in like a lion. Wind blowing everywhere, usually it's those southern winds coming in. And we're putting our kites together, getting ready to go out and fly them. Not today. Today we were just recovering from Titan. Uh, as you all know, they just started naming snowstorms like they named hurricanes. And we just got done with Titan. Well, it dropped another foot of snow in the Midwest. Um, below zero temperatures again. Um, just unbelievable, folks. Unbelievable. Where is the global warming, Mr. Gore? Where is it? Okay. A uh, couple things today. Um, excuse me. Um, Comet Ison. Um, nothing to say about it. <laughs> Well, you know, we, the last time we did talk, we talked about the, the dust in the upper stratosphere and that it could take months, even a year, maybe longer. NASA doesn't know for sure. This is something they've never dealt with before. Something else they've never dealt with before is a debris field the size of Lanier. It's a big one, folks. 2.1 million miles wide. Now... For any of you who do not go to YouTube and look at BP Earthwatch, that's BP like British Petroleum, BP Earthwatch, you know, whether you believe in his, uh, his doctrines or not, one thing you can't take away from him is that he does have access to all the satellites and he uh, constantly is, is looking through the skies and finding some pretty cool stuff. There's a... Um, particular satellite that he's looked through at different meteor showers um, but you can never find a meteor shower on there because they're never there now a meteor shower is a politically correct term for a debris field all meteor showers or most of them are from the debris field of a previous comet that came through and sometimes we go through that uh, debris field uh, or comet uh, that meteor shower year after year after year once a comet comes through, it leaves that debris field. Well, this debris field shows up on this uh, very rare satellite, uh, Star Starka, I think it's called. And before, you could never see uh, debris fields because they were too small. But this thing is large, it's huge, it's dark, it's got a bunch of stuff in it, and it looks like March 20 third or fourth we'll start going through it should take about 30 hours the planet rotates on a 24 so everybody's going to get hit with this thing and speaking of everybody getting hit i i hope some of you are paying attention to the amount of meteors that are being spotted it's just uncanny uh, even my brother on the east coast um one gently landed on top of his truck the other day uh there had been about an inch of snow, and he walked out, and there's this black rock, and uh, unbelievable. Now, that was the Lord confirming to him that we were looking in the right direction, because Genesis 1.14 says he would put lights in the sky for signs. Now, other places it talks about moon, stars, and sun, but Genesis 1.14 says lights, and comets are lights, folks. So, comet Ison, or Wormwood because it does translate into Wormwood in two different languages. No, that's not the trumpet. It's just a train. Uh, so, anyway, the nations of the world have coined a new phrase called Meteor Storm. All of a sudden, they're not calling it a shower anymore, and I think it's because of their anticipation of just how rough this thing could be, especially Comet Lanier in this upcoming, this upcoming one, which will be just... Uh, not too far after the first blood red moon. We're going to see all kinds of stuff happening. So, in the end days, we're going to talk about that a little bit today. You have two leaders. You have an economic leader uh, who handles all the money. We call him the Antichrist. Uh, you'll have to have a mark. No one can buy or sell uh, without having his blessing, which means you have to take his mark, which is the, uh, the name number of the beast. Then he has a helpmate. And this is what we call the second beast he's referred to. And this is the person who is going to be in charge of a one world, not economic system, but religion. So eyes have always been on the Pope. 
uh, because the Catholic Church is the one of the largest religions. It's they probably have about the same amount of members as Islam, um, which is uh, well over a billion uh, members in the Roman Catholic Church, probably close to a billion and a half. Nine hundred years ago, there was a Catholic priest who had a vision, and his vision entailed all future popes and he described different things that would show that his vision was correct uh, different attributes of these different popes and they've been looking at this thing for 900 years and the closer you got to the last pope which they say is you know he, he took it all the way to the last pope um, meaning there would be no more popes after it because there would be no more uh, Catholic religion or world as we know it so the closer we got, uh, when they come to this last pope, uh, Benedict, the prophecy said it would have something to do with olives. So the powers to be is they start looking at different people that they're going to determine or not be elected as pope. Uh, they just made sure it had nothing to do with olives because they wanted to forcefully stop this prophecy from being fulfilled any farther than it had already been fulfilled over the previous 900 years. So they pick out uh, Benedict, they think they're free and clear, and all of a sudden when he comes to power, he decides to start naming several of his programs after a seminary group that he belonged to called Order of the Olive Tree. Um, once again, uh, Father Malachi, 900 years ago, he penned it. So then he talked to Father Malachi, he talks about the last pope. This pope is called the dark pope, the black pope. has nothing to do with his skin, but his heart and his motives. And then he would be called, even named his name, he would be called Peter the Roman. So they went out of their way to make sure that that wasn't going to happen. But unfortunately, uh, once again, here we have a pope who is of Italian descent, so he's definitely a Roman, and his middle name is Peter he is Peter the Roman. And is he a black priest? Is he a dark priest? Well, he's the first Jesuit priest. And the Jesuits are the dark side of the Roman Catholic Church. They are the group that, they are assassins. They kill political leaders, religious leaders, to further the goal of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, it was shocking that they would elect a Jesuit priest. But they did. So was Malachi's prophecies fulfilled yes so here we are folks now this Pope is starting to do some very strange things he's uh, accepted gay marriage as a uh, an acceptable policy just this week uh, two things that stood out besides even his uncanny rise to power uh, first of all Benedict retired he just quit Popes don't quit, they die. Uh, but he quit, so this Pope could come into power. And this po and this was, uh, actually we're almost at the one year anniversary. It was 313 of 13, which 13 is a satanic number, folks. We all know that. And he was announced, you know, have the black smoke and the white smoke. And when the white smoke comes out, it means that they've made their decision. The white smoke came out at 6 minutes after 7 o'clock. Uh, or... 66 minutes after 6 o'clock, which would be 6.66 p.m. So, anyway, um, and of course there's some other things about 6.66 being on their helmet. Uh, we shall see, folks. We shall see. A couple um, disturbing things about this Pope recently, besides his embracing of uh, homosexuality, unbelievable, but he's also embraced the Protestants. Uh, he was even... Uh, uh, on a broadcast with Kenny Copeland uh, of all people and he has decided to embrace Charismatics and Pentecost and uh, even Kenny Copeland's wife said that she was so surprised she was going to go back and embrace her roots in the Catholic religion wow that's just not right folks I, I just don't know how to take that but you know what it is doing it's opening the way for the one world religion because he has also said that Islam is okay. They come from Abraham, and it's the same Father Abraham that uh, birthed the uh, the Jewish religion. 
and the Christian religion. So, he's setting it all up. The only thing that could stand in the way is the deity of Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll see what he does with that one. But it's a scary thought to think what he will do with that. Here's something else. He has hired someone to rewrite the Bible. He wants a new Bible in a uh, common language that children can understand. So who does he hire to rewrite the Bible, the Holy Scriptures? Does anybody know the name Rawlings? How about Henry Potter? That's right. The author of the Henry Potter series is going to rewrite the Holy Scriptures. I'll put a link uh, below here for a picture of her holding. Uh, it actually has got her holding a Bible that says Holy Bible and then her name in almost the same size font is Holy Bible. Uh, disturbing, folks. Disturbing. Well, I don't know if anyone has seen a video on YouTube called I Saw the Tribulation by Ken Peters. Ken Peters was a Catholic uh, person, and in 1980, he had a dream one night, and he dreamt the Lord gave him this dream of the Tribulation. And he saw things in 1980 that had not been invented yet. He saw glass buildings. He saw big screen televisions everywhere. He saw laptops and home computers in every home. He saw Humvees. He, I mean, he, it's just unbelievable the things he saw that had not been invented yet. One of the things he also saw was the mark of the beast. The mark that the Antichrist will require you to have to buy or sell. And he showed what it looked like and where it was positioned. It was positioned in the hand between the thumb and the forefinger right here. And it was in the shape of one of those Aztec stars or Mexican stars, suns, that have little squiggly rays coming out all the way around it. And in the center of it, it had the picture of another hand with the sun in that hand. And so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> pretty disturbing, folks. Well, when this new pope was coming to power last year. I was down to my couple minutes left, so bear with me. I'm going to try to squeeze it all in. Uh, I did a little research on coat of arms, and why would I do that? I don't, you know, it's not something I normally look at, and for some reason the Holy Spirit led me to look up the coat of arms of this new uh, Pope. And the coat of arms was Look it up yourself, folks. It's unbelievable. It is the exact same thing Ken Peters described in his video, I Saw the Tribulation. It is a sun with the squiggly uh, things all the way around it. Now, he has since then um, incorporated that into the Pope. The Pope has a coat of arms, too. So not only was it his family coat of arms, but he has brought that and just changed it a little bit. It is the Pope's coat of arms. Also, if you look up the Argentine flag, it is the picture of the Argentine flag. Um, and that is, you know, look at it yourself, folks. Um, this thing was downloaded on YouTube years and years ago. And here it is. This is the coat of arms. So, it's uh, interesting times that we live in, folks. It's interesting times. So, we have one re uh, world religions coming up. Um, Keep your eye on the Pope. Keep your eye on that other guy. Keep your eye in the sky. Look up. Your redemption draweth nigh, folks. God bless you.